Ruth Bonzer writes, I love the format of buying collections on a lighter budget by getting those cute 6x6 pads. But when I make pages, I usually use a lot of larger pieces. I would love to know how you go about adapting some typical design choices to 6x6 papers on a 12x12 page. Glittergirl, can you help Ruth Bonzer Search for 6x6 success. Of course I can. This week I'm going to take you through a special extended adventure and I'm going to make three different pages with just 6x6 pads plus some larger papers for the background, of course. But I'm going to try to keep all of my pattern paper choices from 6x6 pads. And these are the four that I had to hand that were relatively current and things that I'm using right now. So I'm using Ready, Set, Go from Amy Tangerine and Dear Lizzie, Fifth and Frolic, those are both by American Crafts, the Take Note collection from Studio Calico, and All is Bright, the Christmas collection from My Mind's Eye. But if you pop over to Two Peas, there's a, a link if you're viewing on YouTube, you can pop over to Two Peas and I've listed all sorts of different 6x6 six six patterns, that uh, 6x6 six six paper pads that we have in the Two Peas store, and these design concepts of these three layouts could be adapted to any 6x6 six six paper pad that you like. So pick the designs and the colors and things like that that suit your style, and go ahead and take a 6x6 six six challenge. So I'm going to be starting with the Amy Tangerine papers put the others to the side for the moment and I have one of her 12 by 12 pattern craft cardstock sheets for my background and I have two photos that are 4 by 4 so my first and um, my first suggestion for using 6 by 6 pages on a 12 by 12 page is to consider possibly using a different photo size so this is six by six papers are great with square photos because they have that in common. So you can just emphasize the idea of squares. So you've got a square page layout, you've got square photos, you've got square pattern paper, and you can do a lot of repetition that way. So I'll just give you a quick look at this pattern paper collection. I have used this one, so you will see some that are missing, some that have holes punched from them, but there's still quite a lot here. Oh, what was that one? Um, and really nice colors. This was an autumn collection, but I don't think it's an autumn collection as in it can only work for Thanksgiving or anything like that. There are a few that are leaves, but there's a lot of home and travel themes, some nice stripes, just different motifs that are lovely. So I'm going to use two 4x6 photos and then a technique um, that's really simple, but I use it a lot and I call it messy stacks. So I'm going to pick a few different pattern papers and I'm going to be stacking them up without a lot of order to it. So just look for different patterns. Oh, and by the way, American Crafts have started doing this in their 6x6 paper pads. Where on the 12x12 papers you get that branding strip that that's now patterned on one side, they include that in the 6x6. Now it's going to have the hole cut in the middle from where it can be displayed in a store, but you can still cut it apart and use it, and even these little pieces are just the right colors to match the collection. So if you need just the space of a little label somewhere to write the date or a name, they're really handy. So a little bit useful that. So I have blue with teeny tiny little cameras, which is also repeated on that um, on the craft cardstock background, and I'm thinking maybe the orange, but I'll just have a quick look. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with orange, and then I'm going to include a little bit of that globe print as well, because these are travel photos. This one, I don't think I'll use the whole 6x6 six by she six by six sheet of this one, but I want to um, have it handy, so... Those are the papers that I'm going to go with. That means I need some brown ink to go with this color combination. And I'm just going to start um, mixing them in a way that's basically something like this, except when I just naturally stack them on the paper like this, the angles are too extreme. And the trick to making it look really detailed and lovely is going to be to bring those angles a lot closer together so that I end up with this um, this sort of look to the stack rather than those extreme angles. So I'm going to grab my brown ink and get started. When I'm working with messy stacks of paper, I like to curl the edges up a little bit and I just do that by just running my 
thumb against the edge of the paper. And I know that's not to everyone's style, so if you prefer it to all look very, very flat on the page, by all means, put your adhesive there and don't crease up the edges. But I also will put a pop dot under just one corner. So with the blue, it's on this corner. With the brown, it's on this corner. And with the orange, I'll put that one down at the bottom corner and then I get that dimension from the stack as if the papers were all ruffled up. Now there is a method to why I put the papers in this particular order. I put the blue at the bottom of the stack because the photos are going to go on top of the stack and they have the blue in them so I don't want blue on blue. I'd rather have a separation between the blue but I want the blue in the design so that you um, make that connection of how blue the sky and the ocean are in the pictures. Then the orange provides the best contrast to the blue in the photos. So that one's going to go on top of the stack so that it will be closest to the pictures so that the pictures really pop from the background. And the brown is its a more neutral color, it's closer to the background, and it's a polka dot so it's a much calmer pattern than the other two. So it acts as a neutral to divide the two, um, the two other patterns that are bolder colors and set the color scheme. So I tend to use something like a brown polka dot or an, another neutral piece in between the other layers to separate all the different crazy pattern. Now I want to add my photos on top here but also uh, with a, a strip of these globes. Now because this has a horizontal design to the 6x6 pattern I can actually make this a longer piece than the 6x6 or than the 6 inch width because I can just cut two strips and uh, double it up so that it can go up to the 12 width. Now the bottom set of globes are cut off in the design so I'm going to take the second and third line and then ink those and I won't use them all the way across the full 12 inches but this, this way I can make sure that I have something that's going to go wide enough to go to the edge of the paper stack here and still come out the other side of the photo. So you can spot if you look carefully where I've joined the two strips of the pattern paper and I've put pop dots at the end and then adhered the rest flat. That join in the middle is isn't going to matter because I'm just going to make sure that one of the photos covers up that spot and that's not a problem. So just getting these in the right order and figuring out where I want them to go and then I'll go ahead and adhere them. I think I do like it with that one on that side. So I'm going to do one tucked behind this border just the tiniest little bit. And again I'm trying to keep those angles pretty small. And then make sure making sure this one covers that spot on the the join of the border. And there's where everything else will build. So I have the photos in place, I have those 6x6 six six papers, and now I can start with my title, my writing, and my embellishment. With all the square elements, I decided I'd like a little bit more of this horizontal and, and strip type um, embellishment. So I've grabbed a few different things from the Soleil line from Basic Gray. These are the border stickers, which are vellum. And they work then a bit like washi tape in that they are quite transparent on the page, but they come as a border sticker. And I was thinking I could use part of one at the bottom of the page and then also use the same sticker at the top to start a bit of a vertical embellishment here. And that yellow on craft is going to be quite pale and show all the pattern through. But there are um, other different patterns in there. There's a map, there's dots, there's stripes and numbers and text, some little phrases. And then they come in a few different collections. But uh, on a white 
paper or a really light colored background is going to be a quite bold color and as you get into darker colors craft and then into darker shades from there it's going to be more and more subtle so it just depends on the kind of look that you like once it is pressed down and um, quite firmly the color does show up a bit better than it does when you first place it so so don't um, don't give up if you like the color it will show I, I love it on craft because it tends to look more like it was stamped with a very pale ink rather than a sticker so just a slightly different look and then on the um, 12 by 12 sticker sheet from that same collection there's this lovely little arrow piece and it's in nice tones to match what I've already picked from the Amy Tangerine and um, quite nice mix with the photos so I think I'll include that as well. Then for the lettering, I'm going to use some brown Thicker's Letter Tiles from Amy Tangerine. And I've just ordered these in brown because I used this set. I first only ordered the Weekender set in blue. And I've used it on about a dozen layouts. You get so many letters on this one and you get lots and lots of vowels and the really popular letters. So if you haven't tried this set, the Weekender set, um, it's really easy to go with any page design because of the squareness of the letters and uh, you get so many you can do lots of titles with this particular set of thickers so I went ahead and ordered it in a second color because I've used the blue so many times but I still like it okay so I think I can pop this into the design right about here and then I want this corner popped up So now I have this L shape to the design. I have a good place that I can put my title either here or if it was very short I could put it in here. And then I have the, um, the opposite space to wherever I pick for the title is going to be good for embellishment. I'd also like some sort of vertical element here so I'm going to look at the different pieces I've already pulled out and see if there's something here already that might work. I think I might want a few more of these globes up here but I don't particularly want them on their side so I might add another vertical element and then just a little label where I could put just two or three little globes and that would bring that pattern back up to the top. To finish this I used the I used those brown thickers plus two others and I've used both of these in earlier adventures so and um, this is the map print from abroad in Studio Calico and this is the white wood grain from Amy Tangerine and then just try to emphasize this line and this line to make that corner design and left the pattern to show in the opposite corner and in these groupings use some blue labels from October afternoon one circle and one rectangle shape these um, the similar labels to what October afternoon has done in the past but now they have a few different sheets in popular colors where you can get a whole sheet in the same color they do a red one if you uh, want some Christmas labels and then I did go ahead and cut three of the little globes to put up here at the top used another sticker from that same sheet that I used before and one of the basic gray badges with some little blue gems the arrow sticker is also from that same Soleil sheet and I just cut it into three pieces I um, still have one left over but I have some arrows here and here and that will um, direct your eye so all the arrows that I've put on the page are um, coming to this corner my writing over here and even this little true story piece is cut from the Amy Tangerine 6x6 paper pad so that's my first suggestion for using your 6x6 papers on a 12x12 is to use slightly smaller photos than 4x6 especially squares and do a messy stack of papers because all you'll have to do is ink the edges get those angles really close together and then pile everything else on top and it works really well with this sort of corner design which means you can put a favorite 12x12 paper in the background so that it will still show in your album even when you have everything else on the page so that's one let's go ahead and look at the second idea and for that I'm going to be using Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic one of the specific questions that came up in Ruth's post was that I often use two four by six photos together in the same direction so how would I use six by six papers since my photos are already the six inches and the 
six by six paper is really not going to work as a photo mat in this sort of arrangement. Well, it doesn't mean that I can't use two four by six photos. I definitely still can, but I just need to work with the photos rather than against. So in this case, I'm using some gray cardstock for the background that's only going to show around the very edges and two landscape four by six photos. And I'm going to go ahead and attach them straight away to this top corner and then everything else on the page will be built around that corner of the page. Everything else will build out in blocks. So while I can't mat a 4x6 photo on a 6x6 paper block, I do have that 6 inch side in common so I can use it to fill this gap. Now it does mean that um, you could cheat a little bit. I could either cut these and um, just crop them in ever so slightly so that they would fit on a 6x6 six six, um, piece of paper. At least one 4x6 could easily be matted with a 6x6 six six if you trim it down just a little bit or if you print it with white edges and then trim the white edges off, anything like that. But I wanted to, um, to not cheat as it were and to go ahead and use the photos at their full 4x6 size and then I'm going to block in the rest of the paper. So this is kind of a little um, twist on using quadrants. It's very much a similar idea in that quadrants uses the four corners of the page and that's one of the most frequent ways I use a 6x6 six six paper pad because I can take the four different patterns that I like, overlap them just that little bit in the middle so that I have a cardstock frame around the edge and pile my layout on top of that. And so that's a really, really fast way to do it and I love that 6x6 six six paper pads will have four papers definitely that will all go together and work really well for that. But Ruth kind of uh, preempted me trying that because in her post she mentions that she already knows that that's one of the things that I would do with a 6x6 six six paper pad so I wanted to show some other things and this is a little bit of a different, um, a different take with the same principle because you're still going to be filling the page with blocks but in this case it's going to be blocks that, um, that are not just four 6x6 six six pieces. They're going to be trim down a little bit to fit in the gaps. So I'm just choosing which patterns to include. I chose this pink one. It has lovely little text about life and love and things like that. And the bouquet in the wedding photos is pink so that's a good match to go here. And then this blue. The blue is a really lovely match for the sky. Again we've got pink flowers in the design. So that will fit well over here, which leaves me one more that I need to fill, possibly two if I want to do a smaller gap. So I actually was thinking that I would use this one, which is a different little choice, because this is a paper that you might look at and think that it needs to be cut apart. But I was thinking I could cut this part as a strip to have the one, two kind of thing. I like using the number two on, on wedding photos and wedding pages and things like that. And there we go. And then I need one to fill this gap. Maybe something with a little bit of pink. Um, I think the hearts is perhaps a little too cutesy for the wedding photos. Ah, but this one would work really well because this repeats that same floral that I've used in the bottom corner there but with some lovely text as well. So now I can cut all this to size and I am going to be cutting the 6x6. Six six. I'm not going to leave any of these blocks at the full 6x6 six six side. So I hope that's not too disappointing. <laughs> but um, the trick is that I, I'm not going to have to cut very much at all. And um, so this 6x6 six six paper is already the same width as the photos. I just have to come in and mark where I want to um, trim that edge. And then I can in this case on this side I'll do these two pieces first, this one first and then this one because these are designs that I need to cut to a specific size specific to the pattern rather than the layout and this one gives me that overflow so once I cut these two to what looks right for the pattern I can just fill the rest of the gap with whatever's left um, of this pattern. So here's my page all filled with those 6x6 six six patterns ready to go. So this one is the full 6 inch width and just shortened to take up 
the remaining gap that's so just a bit shorter than four inches and then this side is actually slightly smaller so I started by cutting these blocks just a quarter of an inch um, in from the six so these are five and three quarters wide because I've got those uh, tiny little borders on the other side and then I just started filling all of this in so this one ended up being the full six inch height these two I cut to the pattern size and then just put a tiny little strip of that same pattern from here to fill the gap that I had in between and that's all there is to it is to take the patterns that you like and then if you end up with more gaps fill them in with another block of color so color blocking is definitely something you can do with a 6x6 paper pad and 4x6 photos and of course you could do this with three 4x6 photos and you could do the full top of the page with four 4x6 photos and then just block out the bottom you can work your way around the page in different blocks using 4x6 photos and your 6x6 papers like that so from here I'm going to create my title and my writing and um, a little bit of embellishment on that and neither of these two patterns where I have plenty of space are particularly good to write on. This one already has quite a lot of text and this one is quite a busy pattern to write on. Um, I think it might show with a, a slightly wider pen in black ink and I don't mind writing on backgrounds but this one to me is quite delicate and I'd rather the writing be on another element so I'm thinking that I'll layer in a journaling card or another piece that's a bit paler for the writing and add my title across here and then maybe just a little bit of embellishment to bring these three pieces together at the top of the page. The Today's Story collection works really well with Fifth and Frolic. Today's Story is the Allison Craft for Echo Park um, collection that has all the 4x6 and different cards but also has um, a letter sticker and an embellishment sheet and things like that. So I started with one of the smaller cards from that because I thought this would um, the colors match and I could add journaling on there or I could use multiple journaling cards in the same pocket. So just put that inside a little vellum pocket and use this corner of this pattern paper as a spot to build things. Added a die cut from My Mind's Eye with um, some rhinestones and baker's twine added to that and then use the Today's Story letters to spell out their names. This little ampersand is from the Fifth and Frolic collection and I'm just going to attach that in between with pop dots so that it's a little bit more obvious and layered on top and that pulls all the different layers of, of that um, of those stickers together. Once you get your page to a point like this where it's all boxed out, you can start to see if you want to really emphasize the boxing or if you want to pull away from that and do something that's a little bit less uh, 90 degree. So you can take your title and spell it out so that each letter is a little bit wonky. You can angle more or less, go up and down, or if you really want to emphasize the, the squareness of everything, then get everything really, really nice and straight. So make it so it's obvious that you wanted it one way or the other um, and that will really help your finished design uh, make sense and, and, and be true to your style even if you don't normally fill the page with boxes like this. So you can still continue to, to add more layers. I can add more to, you, to any of these um, pieces or I can start another uh, grouping of embellishment. I want to add a little bit more emphasis to this part of the embellishment. So I thought I would start by finding a few other elements that I can bring into this area of the design. So I've got a little um, tab sticker there from the Dear Lizzie and I have a little arrow that I cut out from the Dear Lizzie sticker book as well. So just adding a few more things to the area where I want um, the subtler embellishments to be uh, able to catch your attention when you get to the page. I definitely wanted this number, well, that's the whole reason that I picked that little piece of paper, so it would be a shame to not um, draw some attention to it at this point. Um, it would be handy if the arrow pointed the other way so that I could get the arrow to point toward the number, um, but with the heart I can't turn it upside down. So for now that will work, but I'll look for just a few other embellishments through um, the Dear Lizzie stickers and get my journaling written on the card and finish this one all up. So here's this one all finished. I decided not to add 
add more embellishment here and instead focus on this area of the page. But I think this is this is a design that you can take with as much or as little embellishment as you want because you could use really bold patterns and then not need much embellishment on top or you could use quite subtle patterns and build more and more detail on top. It does give you really lovely little corners where you can start to just stack up different embellishments and if you want everything to be very square keep them at 90 degree angles. If you want it to feel a little bit more um, homespun or, or a little bit uh, less geometric then start placing things on angles introduce some curves and you'll have a happy mix there um, one little thing I wanted to point out is that the um, the today's story letter stickers include some hashtag stickers so if uh, if you use hashtags with your friends to to file things I decided um, this was the first wedding I'd gone to that had an official hashtag so throughout the day if you posted a picture you were supposed to use the hashtag holes get hitched and so I've recorded that on the page so my journaling's inside the little pocket and I used the hashtag sticker there I did find some more arrows because there are also some on the today's story uh, a sticker sheet so I could point some in the right direction toward that number and that's my second idea for six by six pages or six by six papers on a 12 by 12 page and that one does include four by six photos one more idea to share with you and that's from my Christmas journal for my Christmas journal this year, I'm using one of the Studio Calico handbook albums, and it's a 6x8 page size, but there are different sizes of page protector inside, so you can have 4x6 slots, um, smaller, and full uh, 6x8 papers. So for this design, I, I'm not going to go straight to 6x6 on a 12x12, but this time 6x6 on a 6x8. And the techniques that I use there can also be used on... Um, in divided page protectors that you would put in a 12 by 12 album in anything with a 4 by 6 or 6 by 8 or any other sort of um, different smaller page size. Anything that has that 6 inch width can really find the 6 by 6 useful. So in my Christmas journal this year the full 6 by 8 pages are either white or craft cardstock and for this page I'm going to use one of the pattern papers from All is Bright and I'll just uh, flip through this one so you can see. Now the My Mind's Eye paper in this 6x6 is double-sided. Those American Crafts papers were single-sided, so um, it's worth looking at the specifics to see what each pattern, um, each different manufacturer gives you because they are slightly different setups. So that gives you an idea of that pretty, pretty collection. And I want something um, that will... I think this one actually. Oh, I'll say that one for later because it has 1225 as the date. Uh, something similar to that, but not that one. Uh, how about this? In my album, I'm using a lot of white and gold and quite neutral pages. So I was looking for a design that had quite a lot of white. Um, this, this particular paper pad isn't perforated, so I need to trim the top edge here to get rid of the strip at the top and then I'm going to use that full 6x6 block for my page design and it's a similar technique to what I use on a 12x12 sometimes where I cover about two-thirds of the page with one pattern paper and then place most of the design at the top of the layout. This time I'm going to be doing that just on a smaller scale with my 6x8 page size so I still have the craft cardstock on show, so it's going to match everything else that's in my album, but I still get a good percentage of that pattern filling the page. Then I have my photos for this are really small, and I'm going to pull in some different elements here. I've brought out the um, the matching stickers from All is Bright. Now those do come on a 12 by 12 sheet, and they... It, Quite a few of them are quite large, but there are also some smaller designs that will work well on a small page. These Studio Calico craft heart stickers, and they do these craft stickers in a, a few different shapes, uh, and you get multiple sizes of the same shape on the sheet, but they're it, essentially like um, having craft cardstock 
pre-punched into lots of different things but the adhesive's already there because it's a sticker and then from October afternoon red mini market and label stickers use those in all those different colors so I've stocked up on red for Christmas and these lovely little red labels that are new from Jenny Bolin studio now for this page I'm going to be using a really small photo and um, printed uh, from an Instagram shot and then I also want to have room to journal which is another reason why I wanted set something that was relatively subtle so that I would be able to write on top of it and it still be legible. To add a border and some color to the top edge of that pattern paper I've just used another of those six by six sheets and I'm using a mini scallop border punch. This is from the American Crafts Knockout Collection which is the uh, system where you have one base and different cartridges for the different designs and they just slot into the base. So this is a teeny tiny little scallop and the 6x6 six six sheets are perfect for making that little border. So when you come to the end of a 6x6 six six sheet this is something that is really useful to use up any of the papers that you have left because if you go through most of the paper pattern or make most of the paper pattern you've used most of those patterns but there's still a few that you haven't it may be that the the ones you haven't used are because they don't grab your attention as a full page but if you cut them down to a smaller design with a punch um, or even just trimming them into strips if you don't have something that would would give you a nice bordered edge, then you may find that you're able to use them a bit more on all your different projects. And I could do this facing the other direction, but I think I will go this direction so it overlaps. And then I'll start to make a spot for my photo at the top. I wanted to bring in just one of these stickers as a bit of a significant element to the page. These stickers in this paper line are already layered in the design so they make things come together really quickly. If you haven't started on a December or Christmas project and you really wanted to, it's definitely a line I would recommend because it's so fast to use. I quite like to repeat that red behind the photo, so I'll just keep that same 6x6 six six sheet out and then I can just use it to get that tiny little bit of red around the edges. I added the title with the October afternoon mini, mini market stickers plus the green American crafts letter stickers and my date on a, a label and then spread the little craft heart stickers around my journaling. So that gives me plenty of space to still, still see and appreciate the pattern. My photos included. I've got all the details that I wanted to include for that particular entry. And throughout my album I'm using gold as an accent so just as a final t finishing touch I'm going to use a bit of the Gold LeMay Color Shine and that's back in stock here at Two Piece. It's been really popular but as I record this it's it has reappeared in the store so if you were waiting for one of these now's a great time to grab it. And if it's already sold out by the time you watch this video I'm really sorry. Click that request and notify and you'll get a notification next time. So I just want to add a little bit to the corners and for this page that's all I'm going to add for a more um, a more obvious shimmer I can use the eyedroppers or a mask and I'm using a little star mask throughout my um, my journal you may have seen it on the cover and um, but here I just wanted a little bit of shimmer in the corners and that finishes everything um, to make it match everything else that'll be in my journal. So I hope you have enjoyed this extended adventure with three different techniques using the 6x6 pages and that's how I use my 6x6 paper pads when I'm scrapbooking. If you have anything that you would like to share and additional techniques by all means please uh, go ahead and upload it to the gallery and tell us about it. Click 
click that button so that it will get linked um, with all the different projects for 6x6 pattern paper um, this week, and I hope you'll take on that challenge. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.